Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keep It Fish Simple. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys the pros and cons of live food. Now, I haven't made any pros and cons videos in the past. Now, today I'm gonna to be comparing live food to pretty much every single other food in the aquarium hobby. Now, I'm obviously not gonna go in depth on all the facts with all the other kinds of foods. I'm just gonna talk about basically my opinions on live food and the things that are good about it and the things that are really kind of like bad about it. Now, personally, I think live foods are an awesome food for your fish and I don't really have a lot of problems with them. There's a few things that are negatively attached to live foods and I'm going to discuss them in this video But overall live foods are really really good for fish There's a lot of reasons why I'm going to explain that in this video So make sure you stay around to the end of the video to get all of the information and without any further ado Let's get started So I guess we should probably start this video off by talking about the pros and then at the end of the video I'm going to talk about the cons. So the first pro is obviously that live foods are highly nutritious. Now live foods there's plenty of them that you can try. So there's micro worms, you can hatch baby brine shrimp, you can culture black worms, you can just buy live black worms, you can culture daphnia, you can culture infusoria. There's a very big range of live foods available and all of these foods are very nutritious. Now obviously some foods are more nutritious than others and have different macros and vitamins and stuff like that in them. It's hard to put a blanket over all of these foods and say that they're highly nutritious but compared to a lot of packaged foods like tropical flakes and all that kind of stuff, live foods absolutely trump them in the nutrient department. There's a lot more beneficial nutrients that you just can't have inside of your packaged foods. So your packaged foods like your tropical flakes and stuff like that are designed to create a balanced diet but I always say this in videos, they never really quite can do this and the reason for this is because they can't get these like special kinds of different nutrients and stuff like that that are only present in live organisms into the foods because they've got to preserve them and all that kind of stuff. They've all been preserved to last as long as possible and that's the reason why. So the first thing that's really, really good about live foods is in most cases they're going to be a lot more nutritious than your packaged foods. So the second pro about live foods is they don't break down as quick in an aquarium. So for instance, if I feed tropical flakes or something like that in an aquarium, in the first couple of hours that the tropical flakes sit in there and aren't eaten, they're gonna start breaking down and they're gonna start to dirty up the water and all that kind of stuff and make it really, really bad. So live foods, this isn't really a case because most of the live foods can last at least a couple of hours before they die and this lets the fish actually eat for a longer period of time. So for instance, if I feed some baby brine shrimp, that can last in there for a couple of hours and the fish can just slowly pick at them. And I can actually feed the fish while I'm not at home. So for instance, I can feed a batch of baby brine shrimp to some fry. The fry are gonna eat it for the next couple of hours and then I don't have to feed them constantly like throughout the day. I can just kind of feed it twice and those brine shrimp last long enough in there for everyone to get a feed and to continue eating and not starve to death. And the same goes for stuff like your live black worms. They can last for days at a time in an aquarium and you can just feed a big clump and it can just sit down the bottom of the aquarium and they can all pick at it and stuff like that. And it's more like in the wild because normally what's gonna happen is people say you can overfeed fish really easily. I agree with this, you can definitely overfeed fish but you have to feed like a wide variety of different foods and you kind of want your fish to have a different meal every time they eat. So I try and cycle through a bunch of different foods that my fish eat. And basically what I'm trying to say is overfeeding happens when they just get like a treat, like for instance some live foods and they just go crazy and just start eating all the live foods and that's when you can have problems. So I try and feed a range of different foods but the point I'm trying to get at is that live foods are always going to last longer in an aquarium and they don't dirty up the water as much as your packaged foods. And then my fourth pro is going to be that they always go for it. Now there is not going to be a single omnivorous or carnivorous fish that's not going to go for a live food unless they are ill or there's just some weird thing going on with that fish they are always gonna go for it. So if I've got new fish that come in and they're not taking a lot of the foods, like they're not taking tropical flakes and stuff like that, just to make sure that they're eating and they survive, I always feed live foods. They never don't take it. Like every time I feed brine shrimp, fish take it. They always love it. There's just some sort of natural instinct to go and eat a live food because it's wriggling or it's doing something that's just appealing to the senses of the fish. I can't really explain it and make it make a lot of sense, but they always just will always go for a worm and it's the same for like when people are fishing. You're always gonna have a better chance of catching a bigger fish if you have some live bait because it's just the way the fish works. So they're not gonna go for tropical flakes unless they understand that they are their food because the tropical flakes don't have that moving aspect. They don't have any jerking motions or stuff like that that are gonna attract them to eat live foods. It's the complete opposite. They're always gonna be really, really appealing and attractive to a lot of fish and they're always gonna take them. Now pro number five is gonna be a really, really quick one and I wouldn't consider this to be a pro for me 
but for a lot of other people this can be a pro especially for people doing like bigger fish is that you can gut load your live food this doesn't really work with a lot of the live foods that I work with but for instance crickets and stuff like that that you feed to really big Oscars and all that kind of stuff you can gut load so you can feed them a lot of foods and a lot of nutrients and stuff like that they'll eat them and they'll be stuck inside of the live food and then you can feed it to your Oscar or something like that and they're gonna just take it and they're gonna get all those nutrients inside of them not really a pro for me but a pro for some of your big fish keepers okay so I've just talked about all of the pros associated with live foods that I can think about. There's a lot of other things that I've probably not mentioned that are very, very micro, but those were all the macro things that are really like beneficial and really good about live foods. But now let's talk about some of the cons because there are a few little cons and my first con is gonna be that they can be more expensive. So this depends on the way you do your live foods because some live foods can be completely free. Your infusoria kits and all that kind of stuff can be absolutely free, especially Daphnia and all that kind of stuff can also be free if you can get like a source of them and you can culture them yourself. The same goes for microworms. You can get like a culture of microworms for like a couple of bucks and you can just culture that for the rest of your aquarium hobby. It's not gonna cost you anything. It's completely free food. But if you're gonna buy black worms and stuff like that consistently from a local fish store, in most cases, it's gonna cost a bit more than what you would spend on some of your packaged foods. So it's not a huge price difference to pay and the benefits of feeding live foods are totally worth it. So in some cases, it can be completely ridiculous. Like I wouldn't buy little tiny bags of black worms and stuff like that but I would buy like a lot of them and make it worth your money but they can be in some instances a little bit more expensive than your common like kinds of packaged foods. Okay and so con number two is going to be that these foods require a little bit more work obviously than your packaged foods. So your packaged foods are created and made to go straight away so you just buy them and you can feed them straight away but these guys require a tad bit more work and it's not a lot for a lot of these guys but it is a little bit more work. So all of these foods, unless you're buying them live and someone else has cultivated them, the chances are that you're gonna to have to cultivate them and you're gonna to have to like culture all of these different types of foods and stuff like that. And it's gonna require a little bit more work. So it's a little bit of a con, but it's really, for me, it's not a huge con and it's not something that's gonna completely stop me from doing live foods because the benefits just trump this con. It's something to be considered and it is like, obviously I'd rather not spend time like changing out branch and water and stuff like that, but really it doesn't take a lot of time at all. It's not something that's gonna like be a big detriment to your hobby and in fact, just putting in these little extra 1% are gonna make a huge difference to the health of your fish and the success you have breeding with them and stuff like that. Just, it's, it's definitely a con. Con number three, which I would consider to be a pretty big con is that sometimes disease can be transmitted. Now, this depends on what kinds of foods you're feeding. For instance, if you're feeding like live blackworms, sometimes you can actually transmit some diseases from the live blackworms into your fish. And it's just something to be wary of because it does happen from time to time. If you're not aware of it, you're just gonna get blindsided by it. But if you're aware of it, you can keep an eye on it and all that kind of stuff and it'll be easier for you. So a lot of freshwater fish pathogens can be transferred from some live foods. So I'm not too sure on the specifics, but I know for a fact that when you buy blackworms, sometimes there's leeches and there's all that kind of stuff in there. So you gotta be very, very careful. But one live food that will never transfer a pathogen over to your fish is brine shrimp. And this is because they are a saltwater creature. So the saltwater creatures can't transfer any pathogens over to the freshwater creatures. It's like a risk-free investment. Live baby brine shrimp and brine shrimp in general are just a really, really good food because they're high in protein and they can't transfer pathogens over to your fish. So that's just another con is you gotta be careful with some of the other ones. So your Daphnias and stuff like that that are cultured outside. They can, in some instances, bring pathogens into your aquarium, which you can treat, but it's just something to be wary of. And then my fourth and final con is gonna be that you cannot store live foods easily for a long period of time. So in some cases, you can store like some leftover baby brine shrimp in the fridge and use them the next day, but you can't keep a pack of like brine shrimp for nine months in the back of your closet like you can with like your tropical flakes and stuff like that and frozen foods and all that kind of stuff. These guys cannot be stored for a long period of time. So either you buy them, you don't use them and then you've just wasted your money. You've got to use them up in the first couple of weeks, especially with like your life black worms and stuff like that. Otherwise it's just a complete waste of money and that's just another con. So that's pretty much everything I could think about with the pros and cons of live foods. If you guys would like to see more of these styles of videos, please let me know in the comments below because I'll keep making them. I wanna compare a lot of different things to each other. And basically in summary, live foods I really do enjoy. I always recommend feeding a variety of different foods to your fish to get like the best health and to mimic nature as much as possible. But live foods, in my opinion, are a very, very good source of food. They're always gonna be better than packaged foods for nutrients and all that kind of stuff. So 
I really do enjoy feeding them. I hope you guys learned something from this video and I will see you guys in the next one.